Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit. Once I put my microphone on. Hi, is that better? Hi, nice to see you. Welcome to Above Life Channel. Today I hope to inspire your spirit and fill you up with hope. This channeling video, I'm going to chat with Elvis. I'm going to kind of do a casual conversation with him because I've been thinking about, you guys, I have an idea. I was thinking about doing a little mini retreat in Memphis, Tennessee and going to visit Graceland. And I've been kicking around the idea. It would probably be, probably be in the spring of 2020. But I wanted to chat with Elvis and see what he suggests. Okay, so let's talk with Elvis. Oh, I just don't look that great right now. So I was going to go to a soccer game for my youngest and then I decided not to. I decided to stay home so that the house could be really quiet. There's only one kid home right now and he's one of my older kids. So he's like playing video games in his room. So it's pretty quiet here and nobody else is here. The dogs are in the kennel and I get to just chat with you guys. So it's like awesome. But I'm like kind of casual, I guess, a little casual. Oh well, whatever, whatevs. All right, so Mr. Elvis Aaron Presley, will you come in? Oh my goodness. I, I, I am not used to being casual with you like this. Like I feel super underdressed. Um, he has a white shirt and like a, a black tie, but it's not like a bow tie, it's, a, it's like an like a thin tie that's tied like a bow and that kind of hangs down. I don't know how to explain this. Like when you tie your shoes like that kind of a tie, like a ribbon tied around his neck. That's what he has. Um, and black pants. It's a little country western like or something like that. A little bit, not country western, but a little bit different. A little bit more country looking. A little. Um, and there's like piping around the pants, like the pockets in the front. That's white. And the black pants, it's kind of different, I don't know. And I see him with a black guitar, a big black guitar, so like the back is big. And uh, it's black with white on it, white trim and a white like uh, pad thing. I'm not a guitar player, you guys, I'm not a musician, so I don't know what those things are really called, but like the little pad on the guitar thing, you know, where you rest your hand kind of thing like that, is white. And so have a seat, Elvis, if you don't mind, if you'd like to sit. He says, yes, ma'am. He sits down and he's asking for tea, sweet tea or something, or he's mentioning sweet tea. I don't know if that's something he liked or not, but it's like iced tea, but it's sweeter than what I would normally drink it. So he's, he just mentions that. That might be a thing you guys might know if you're fans. I don't know. And um, so I wanted to share, I've been thinking about you a lot and it's kind of interesting because I feel like there's a lot of parallels between you and Prince, the musician Prince, and I've done lots of um, audios and videos and things comparing the two of you guys. Um, and, well, not at Above Life Channel though. I haven't shared that at Above Life Channel. That's for my work when I work specifically with Prince in the Afterlife at the purplemedium.com website and my blog there. Um, that's from over the past like three years. I've done some of that stuff. And I, so I was doing some Prince work this weekend and preparing for my retreat for his people, his peeps for the fall and that I do every year. This is my third year doing it. And you came up, like I, I started to feel connected to you. And then I saw a video of a daily vlogger that lives out in Hollywood that I love. There's a daily vlogger, his name is, or his channel is Days, D-A-Z-E, with Jordan the Lion. Days with Jordan the Lion. I've been watching him for like, I don't know, a couple of years, I think, on and off, you know? And just interesting guy, really nice guy. He's originally from like the Midwest, I think Ohio. Anyway, he recently did a road trip and he went to Tupelo, Mississippi and to your house. I didn't watch the video, but I saw that he did that. And then it got me starting to think about that. And I saw a vlog that he had done about your house in Palm Springs. And I thought, oh my gosh, and people can do tours of it. I thought I better get out there and do it. I guess it's on the market. So I wanted to chat with you about like, should, we, should I go to Graceland? 
And you know that I've been by there. I've been outside the gates and at the little mini mall across the, across the street, which now everything's totally different, but like 21 years ago or something, I drove right by there and wasn't able to go in. And I don't know if it was because it was late and we were trying to get someplace else. We weren't staying in Tennessee. It was a road trip. We were heading to Mississippi. And so, um, but I haven't actually been there. And so I'm thinking, should I go to Mem Memphis and go to Graceland or should I go to Palm Springs and then maybe LA and check out some of the houses of yours around there, you know, or do both or like, what should I do? What do you recommend? What what is the most beneficial, do you think, when I want to go and kind of feel your energy? Where am I going to feel your energy and connect with your energy super easy? He says, well, I think you know the answer to that. And he says, Graceland, Graceland. And he doesn't say Graceland. He says Graceland, Graceland. Almost sounds like a Lynn. Graceland, Graceland. So Graceland is really kind of touristy though. There's lots of people going in and out of there. There's lots of other people's energy there. Kind of how like when I go to Paisley Park, there's lots of other people's energy there too. So you kind of have to really hone in on the energy of the person who created the house and the intention of connecting with that person. So you at Graceland. So Graceland is right. I felt so like, oh, I have to go to Graceland. I have to go to Graceland. And I think I'm going to go and bring like some people, like a small group of like five or six people, maybe eight. Eight seems like a lot though, because I want to experience it for the first time. I'm going to experience it for the first time. And I want to be able to channel after I do the tour. So I want to be able to have a group of people that we can go do it together and then I can channel and connect with you and talk with them in the evening and share my psychic perspectives of the tour. And I'm thinking I might even need to go on the tour more than once because I feel like there's a lot to take in there and once it just doesn't feel like it's going to be enough. And he says, no ma'am. He's so polite. No ma'am. No ma'am. He's showing me peaches. I, keep, I think they're peaches. They might be oranges. They're like I think they're peaches. They're like fruit. He's showing me peaches. I think they're peaches, peach trees or something. I don't know what that's about, but he's showing me that. And I mean, maybe, are you referencing Georgia? I mean, that's what I would think of when I think of peaches, but I think they're peaches. I don't think they're oranges. I think they're peaches. Um, and then I can see the markers out by the meditation gardens and I can see that as a very sacred, special place. I wonder if I could, I, I'm assuming you can't take video. I don't know. Maybe you can. I'm assuming you can't. That would be kind of disruptive. But I know you can take pictures inside there because I've seen people take pictures inside there. So I could take pictures, but I wonder if I could audio, like use a memo, voice memo app or something and record things as I'm going through. It'd be really, it'd be, I think, really a lot to take in. And that's why I'm thinking if I went with a group of people, I'd have to go with a small group so that it wouldn't be overwhelming for me to manage their energy plus mine if I'm doing it like in a retreat in a group setting, you know, kind of thing. Interesting. So you do think that Graceland. So I am drawn to the house in Palm Springs, though. Why is that? He says, because of love. He says, because love, because love, he says. That was a, he says, that was a really good, that was a high time of my life. That was a really good time when, when Priscilla and I first got married, he said. And then he's talking about, he mentions that he wasn't faithful. He says, if I could only be faithful, you know. Hmm. Well, yeah, the Palm Springs house, I'm really drawn to that. Maybe I should look into that. I understand that it's up for sale. So I'm not sure if I'd be able to get there in time to actually tour it before... And that would be the only thing I'd tour there. Although if I went to Palm Springs, I think I would do other celebrity homes too, or other sites. I'd go to different spots and channel. Um, I'm not really sure. But there does feel, that feels like the only thing there and it feels like not very overwhelming. So if I was gonna do that, it would have to be multiple people. But Graceland seems a lot, but Memphis itself seems like there's so much there. Like honestly, like I don't know the history of that place, but just even feeling it feels so overwhelming and so busy. It feels fun, but it feels like, as a psychic, like, oh, 
the energy. I, there's got to be tons of famous people around that area and from that area, and there's got to be a lot of people I could channel, but I'd want to just focus primarily on you, Elvis, and I can feel your mom with you. I actually just felt your mom energy. Very sweet lady. Very sweet. Oh, okay, so if I tap into your mom's energy, that will help me to kind of buffer the rest of the other, the chaotic energy and keep things kind of calm. He says, yes, yes it will, yes it will. He says, her energy sure does, it sure does, it really. And he says in, in my words, he's using my words, he says it will ground you, it grounds you or centers you, you know, grounds you. He says, you can tap into mama and feel that energy. That will help you, mama. He says, mama, you can tap into mama. That's a great idea. Thank you for that. That is really, that's a really great piece of advice. That is a good piece of advice, you guys. That is a good piece of, maybe we should channel your mom in a session. <laughs> Would she mind that? He says, I don't know. Well, he says, I don't know. She wasn't much for the, the limelight, you know? She wasn't much for the attention. He says, but she could be a talker. She could be a talker. He says, she'd probably be bringing out my baby books and showing you all about me. <laughs> <laughs> she probably would be, huh? I feel like she's very religious. I can feel that, very religious and very kind of um, very mannered. Nah, I can feel that energy. I feel that, but she's very proud of you. I can feel that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so I can tap into your mom and that will help me balance energy. Cool. So I'm thinking February, um, April or May next year, 2020. Does that feel good? March? I say February, I skip March and I go April and May. And the reason why I did that was because, you know, um, traveling during spring break is, is a lot. It can be more expensive and a lot more tourists and stuff. Places. I don't know what Memphis is like though. Is it humid? He says it's hot. It gets hot, he says. You won't mind it. He says, you won't mind it, Miss Bridget. <laughs> you won't mind it. I do like the humidity. I know it's weird, right? Oh, it's so weird. I'm probably going to regret saying that. Because I guess Memphis humidity, there ain't no humidity like Memphis humidity, he says. <laughs> He's showing me rain, though, that there's storm, storms and stuff, too. Like um, maybe certain times of year there might be rain, like in the spring is the rain. In February and early March, something like Mar end of February, early March or something. I don't know. All right. He's showing me. Yeah, everything's black and white, like his outfit's black and white. And then I see a car that's white and black. It looks like he had the same car in two different colors, black and white. Is that true? But he's a similar, they were similar. And then I see like the brand of Chrysler. And then I see a Ford Fre Freyline, Freyline, Freyline. I don't know cars, you guys. And then he says, that's what... Uh, me and your prince, he says, have in common. We both like cars. Fast cars, he says, fast. Real fast cars, real nice fast cars. Yeah, I saw, um, I saw something about that, about you and cars. Hmm, okay, I don't remember. All right. <sighs> Let's make this more interesting because we're just channeling. So we're just talking and I'm really casual trying to figure stuff out and letting people watch me. And I don't know that they're going to be that interested in that. Um, so is there anything in particular that I should pay attention to or that one, if our viewers are going to visit Graceland, that they should pay particular attention to or notice? Now, I understand that you can't go upstairs. I've heard that you can't go upstairs. That's how Paisley Park is too, you can't go upstairs. Like bedroom off limits and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that's, that's because that's how it was when you were there, I understand that. Um, is there anything in particular we should pay attention to or any kind of energy that we could sense more than others? He showed me there's a place where there's a piano and he said this and he's showing me like there's a room that kind of opens up and there's a piano and then off to the side there, there's like a step down place or something or a patio out back or someplace out back where you kind of step outside. Like you can only smoke outside. He's what he's saying. You can only smoke outside. So if the fellows came over, they could only smoke outside. But there's almost like this den or four season porch area or something like that that kind of goes into a patio. And this is kind of where the fellows were. And 
Um, a lot of stories shared there, like storytelling there. He's showing me that. And then, so you can feel, he says, you can feel other famous people. He says, you'd be able to feel some other famous people if you really, really tried, he said. And he said, some of the, you know, what you consider the bad boys, you could feel that energy. He said, Bridget, if you did a little bit of research, just a little bit, he says, if you knew their names, you could connect with them. And that would be interesting. He said, it might overwhelm you a little. It might be a little too much for you the first time. But this space is a space that was, uh, you'll feel that there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, hectic, he's saying hectic, not chaotic, but he uses the word hectic energy there. Okay. And he says the most peaceful part by far is the meditative gardens. And he says it's, it's really beautiful, very tranquil there. And um, there's a fountain. He's showing me that he's showing me and I can hear water. So there's got to be a fountain somewhere out there. I'm assuming you guys, I don't know. I haven't been there. I don't know. And then um, he says it's really beautiful, really, really beautiful out there. I'm real peaceful, real peaceful out there. And he says, uh, you can just think, you know, be alone with your thoughts and just, just be in, in a state of uh, consciousness that just, it just feels real, real beautiful, real peaceful, real beautiful. He says, um, there's an office, a place I'd be concerned, an office or a den that I spent some time in. He says, uh, with a recliner in it and a real comfortable spot. Um, you might feel me there, but it's not a way I'd necessarily want you to, to feel me, you know, to remember me there, like being kind of lazy, like a lazy boy, he says. But, um, you know, mostly it was my, it was my home and it was my, like a little island, you know, like my own private little island, Graceland was. So, so mostly people would leave you alone, but every once in a while people would kind of just sneak in and kind of come up the, the walk and it was, it was kind of strange, you know, people get real crazy sometimes, but, but I was never really worried or afraid or anything like that. And we had to get some security to take care of things a little more, a little better. I've had to tighten some things up a little bit, but, uh, but for the most part, you know, it was, it was all right. And I really felt, I really felt comfortable there. Well, it really felt comfortable there. He's showing me hitting golf balls. I don't know why he would hit golf balls. Just randomly hit golf balls. Must be really big there. Like screwing around. And then I see like a fence and I see like cans, like an old, like just wooden fence kind of thing. And I see cans set up on the end of the fence, like with little holes in it. Like you would like, um, like target practice or something, like shooting at the cans. I see that. It kind of like boys, like teen, something that you'd see teenage boys do, like all that kind of vibe of like teenage boys and stuff and kind of horse play and that kind of thing. That's kind of the vibe I get there for him. Earlier on, he says earlier on, yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 that's, that's, a, that's accurate, that's accurate. But uh, later on, it's a little different, you know, it gets a little, he says, when you feel the different times in my life, he says, you'll feel the energy the shift and the the thickness it gets a little thicker and uh, you'll hear it they they talk about it in the tour the different stages of my life and you'll you'll feel the shift and the difference and if you pay attention you'll be able to pick up on that and I, I believe you will but how would you like to be remembered Elvis like how what part of your life would you like us to remember you says young young and good-looking <laughs> young he says young he says but you know you're so foolish he says you're so foolish when you're young and you just don't make right choices and you don't do right by people people who love you and you know you disappoint people and that's hard it's a hard thing to come back to come back from to recover from and you never really trust yourself you know with in relationships and with people it's it's a tough thing you know it's a tough thing. It's great to be young and have your whole life ahead of you and feel, you know, he's, make, he's making me, he's, he's, he's saying something like basically immortal. When you're young, you feel like you can just do a divine thing and, and everything's going to work out just fine. But then, you know, you have life experience. He says life, you have life experiences and then everything changes and life is just never the same. 
it's just not the, it's just not the same after all that you know after you start to get older and you're not protected from life anymore you you don't live in a bubble anymore you 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 experience loss and pain and and heartbreak and and you make choices that are hurtful for yourself for your, to your body and 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 harmful to others too and has a negative impact on on those around you the ones you love and it's you can't you can't really come back from that so you can't really ever make up that come back or make things better you can't really make amends it it doesn't ever feel like it's enough hmm Interesting. So you'd want us to remember you were young and good looking. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm sure many of our viewers could easily do that. Easily do that. So, all right, you guys. So this is Bridget with Above Life Channel, and you've been watching this video where I've been chatting with Elvis in the afterlife and specifically getting some input from him about if I should go to Graceland. If I should, and I asked him about that, and he gave me some input, and I hope that you guys have enjoyed this casual conversation with Elvis Presley in the afterlife. I hope that we have inspired your spirit today, given you some hope and encouragement to live your life, because this is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.